G'day, it's Fugitive Australian journalist Shane Dowling from the website Kangaroo Court of Australia. Now today the New South Wales Parliament had another hearing in relation to their uh, investigation into former New South Wales Premier John Barillaro stitching up a $500,000 job for himself after he left Parliament. Now the witness today was Jenny West. She was the person who was originally going to get the position, uh, trade position based in New York on the Go New South Wales government payroll. But uh, in October last year, before John Barrow resigned, he had the position withdrawn from uh, Jenny West. Without a doubt, he played a part in her ultimately getting sacked. Uh, she was sacked a month later. And that was obviously to cover up uh, the overall uh, conspiracy to make sure the job ultimately went to John Barrow Laro. Now, if you're new to this story, you can... Uh, visit my website, Kangaroo Court of Australia. You'll see articles over the last couple of weeks. And also on my YouTube channel, you'll see videos over the last couple of weeks explaining the story. When John Barolaro resigned last year, uh, he made sure his department uh, lined up the New York trade job for himself. But first of all, he had to get rid of Jenny West uh, because she'd been offered the role. And the person who took care of that was uh, Amy Brown, who was the CEO of Investment New South Wales, which was overseeing the appointment of the role. And Amy Brown gave evidence a couple of weeks ago, uh, almost two weeks ago, to the New South Wales Parliamentary Inquiry. Now, she gave evidence, and a little bit suspect, she wasn't really critical of uh, Jenny West, but she implied there were issues, and that in itself was defamatory. But at the end of the hearing, which lasted three hours, uh, Amy Brown, um, they asked for it to go in camera, which meant uh, the public broadcast was stopped and also the journalists who were there reporting on it live were made to leave the room and in camera was private hearing. And that was leaked to the Australian, which is owned by News Corp, which is a Liberal Party uh, propaganda outfit. And they run propaganda on behalf of the Liberal Party and it was leaked. And Amy Brown went to town on Jenny West, uh, making up a lot of lies about her. Oh, there was issues with her resume, they didn't add up. Uh, there was this and there was that. And they leaked it to the Australian to defame uh, Jenny West, obviously. But uh, Jenny West has come and given evidence today and she's opened, uh, unloaded with both barrels against Amy Brown. She hasn't used the word perjury, but that's certainly what she was saying because she said uh, in response to numerous pieces of evidence that Amy Brown gave that they were untrue and false. Now, Amy Brown gave evidence under oath so if she's given evidence that's untrue and false, that means she's perjured herself. Now Jenny West used that uh, phrase many times today. That piece of evidence was false and that piece of evidence was untrue in relation to the evidence that Amy Brown gave, defaming Jenny West in effect. So I'll play you that now and you can listen to it and it goes for roughly 14 minutes, the opening uh, statement by Jenny West. So let's have a listen to it now. Today, we'll be hearing from one witness, Ms Jenny West, who was the former Deputy Secretary of Trade and International Trade and International and Investment New South Wales. I thank Ms West for making time to give evidence to this inquiry. Ms West, could you please state your full name and position title and swear either an oath or an affirmation, please? Jennifer Mary West, former Deputy Secretary of Trade and International with Investment New South Wales. I swear that the evidence now about to be given by me shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help me God. Thank you very much. And I understand you have an opening statement for the committee. Yes, I do. Thank you. Thank you. I'm here today at the committee's request. I have never spoken publicly about this matter. For the sake of my family and their privacy, I have been trying to move on from what has been a very disappointing episode in my life. I hope my evidence today can help the committee understand the facts of this matter. In that respect, I am happy to assist where I can. I commenced as the Deputy Secretary, Trade and International in New South Wales Treasury in October 2020. Prior to that, I had worked as the General Manager, Trade and Investment, Digital Innovation at Austrade for 18 months. 
I moved into the public sector after more than 20 years in the private sector, in the banking and services industry, including leadership roles in Diageo, Telstra and Westpac, amongst others. In March 2021, I moved into Investment New South Wales, an agency within the Department of Premier and Cabinet. I remained Deputy Secretary Trade and International. I reported directly to Amy Brown, who had then been appointed as CEO. On 12th of May 2021, with the support of Ms Brown, I applied for the Senior Trade and Investment Commissioner role for the Americas. I sent a cover letter of my CV to NGS Global, the external recruitment agency. On 21st of July 2021, I be appeared before the interview panel comprising Ms Brown, Mr Jim Betts, the incoming Secretary for the Department of Premier and Cabinet, an independent panel member and Dr Marianne Broadbent of NGS Global. On 12th of August 2021, Ms Brown told me I was the successful candidate. She sent me a briefing signed by Premier Berejiklian, noting my appointment as Senior Trade and Investment Commissioner for the Americas. On 14th of August 2021, Ms Brown approved my request regarding my contract terms. I was so excited about the appointment. I immediately shared the news with my family and friends. They were so happy for me. I began taking steps to relocate and had engaged a relocation company. I looked at rental accommodation in New York and researched colleges for my family. I thought I would be starting the new role in a matter of weeks and I wanted to have my affairs in order. Over the next four weeks, I followed up on my written contract with Human Resources and Legal. I was told that there was delays as Investment New South Wales was awaiting US taxation advice. On 16th of September 2021, Ms Brown requested an in-person meeting the following day. In that meeting, she told me that there was a submission going up to Cabinet requesting that the senior trade commissioner roles would become political appointments and not public sector appointments. <coughs> Ms Brown indicated that this meant my America's trade commissioner role would be on hold. Ms Brown then also told me at that meeting that the funding for my current position the Deputy Secretary position within Investment New South Wales had been reallocated and I may not have that position either. That news shocked me. On 18th of September 2021, Ms Brown emailed me advising that any contract for me in the Senior Trade Commissioner America's role would have to await the outcome of the Cabinet decision. On 27th of September 2021, Ms Brown told me that Cabinet had endorsed the request for Senior Trade Commissioner roles to become political appointments. In the space of four weeks, I went from having been appointed to the role of the Senior Trade and Investment Commissioner for the Americas to potentially not having a job. I felt so confused by what Ms Brown had told me. On October the 11th, I emailed my one-up manager, Mr Michael Kutz Trotter, the Secretary of Department of Premier and Cabinet. I asked Mr Kutz Trotter for a 15 minute meeting to explain my situation. 
I did not receive a response from him. The next I heard from him was by way of a formal letter terminating my employment one month later. On, on 14th of October 2021, I had a Teams meeting with Ms Brown at her request. She told me that I would not be getting the Senior Trade and Investment Commissioner role for the Americas. Ms Brown said that the position, and this is a quote, will be a present for someone. She added, and I again quote, you are an extraordinary performer and I am upset that this has happened. On 19th November 2021, I received a letter terminating my employment, effective from close of business 30th of November. This was clearly not how I'd expected my public sector career to end. Until the events of last year, I thoroughly enjoyed my time in the federal and New South Wales public sectors. And I believe I achieved my goal of making a difference alongside many other hardworking and dedicated public servants who shared my values and integrity. Until Ms Brown's in-camera evidence before this inquiry on 29th of June, 2021. I have never been told that my appointment to the Senior Trade and Investment Commissioner's America's role had been withdrawn because of concerns about my professional experience or performance. I had received no explanation from Ms Brown or Investment New South Wales other than what I have outlined today. I am genuinely surprised by the matters raised now by Ms Brown in her evidence before this inquiry. Given those matters have now been made public, I believe I should be given an opportunity to respond to them, especially because many of those things said are inaccurate or even false. I understand Ms Brown gave evidence to this committee that she now thought me unsuitable for the appointment. This suggestion is contrary to my selection by an independent committee following a competitive process and contrary to what Ms Brown told me at the time of my appointment. During my employment in New South Wales Government, I have never received any negative feedback about my performance. The feedback I had received was positive. This included Ms Brown's support for me to apply for the position of Trade Commissioner for the Americas at a performance review at New South Wales Treasury. Ms Brown's suggestion that there were discrepancies in my curriculum vitae is false. My CV was given to an independent panel well ahead of the selection process. It was independently <coughs> checked and vetted by an agency which has the skills to do so. The results of that vetting was part of the process which resulted in my selection. I stand by my CV. Ms Brown says after she told me I was not getting the Trade Commissioner role for the Americas, the relationship between us and between me and Investment New South Wales deteriorated somewhat and I was absent from work without explanation. This is untrue. The 
period to which she refers was a period during which I took sick leave and provided the appropriate medical certificates to justify the same. Ms Brown suggested that I had taken time away from work or misused resources by travelling when there was no need to do so. And going so far to imply I was doing it for personal reasons. That is false. Ms Brown gave no details as to dates and I categorically deny such an allegation. Ms Brown suggested that I had concealed my diary. That is untrue. My diary was always available for inspection. My diary was open and my executive assistant had open access to it. I noticed that Ms Brown also suggested that I had mischaracterised some exchange between an unnamed person at Investment New South Wales and a prominent businessman. Like that prominent businessman, I have no idea what Ms Brown is talking about. When I read Ms Brown's evidence, I was very disappointed. Until this time, I believed that we had a good relationship. As I have set out, much of what Ms Brown has said is simply untrue. Had she contacted me, I could have corrected her. She did not contact me. I now look at that evidence, combined with the fact that it seems to involve an investigation after the Senior Trade Commissioner America's role had been withdrawn with dismay. I hope this opening statement has been of some assistance. I would request a copy of this statement to be tabled. I look forward to your questions. Thank you. So you just heard what Jenny West said now in relation to Amy Brown's evidence. Now, Amy Brown, her position is untenable. She has to either resign or get sacked. One of the two, there is no other option. Her evidence wasn't believable by itself. I wrote that she'd be committed perjury. You can watch the videos or my article on my website. Kangaroo Court of Australia, and you can uh, read my previous reporting on it. So she's got to go, but she's there for defending two people. One's uh, John Barillaro. She's obviously acted as a henchman for him to make sure he got the five hundred thousand dollar job. Um, she used the word today that, uh, or she was um, accused of using the words today of someone was going to get a prize, a lucky prize. Well, she meant uh, John Barillaro was going to get it. But she's also there, Amy Brown was there to defend uh, the New South Wales Premier, uh, Dominic Perrottet. Now, I've just written a couple of articles about him over the last couple of weeks. Uh, him and his crime family, his two brothers, uh, they've been accused of numerous crimes and they need investigating by themselves by ICAC. And so Amy Brown um, was there to defend the New South Wales Premier and his involvement and his knowledge in the $500,000 job and the appointment of uh, uh, John Barillaro. He obviously knows a lot more than he's saying. So this is a public uh, investigation uh, by the New South Wales Parliament that is, will obviously continue for a number of weeks, maybe even a number of months, and hopefully they'll have further hearings with further witnesses. I think it's going to end up uh, being a thousand times better than days of our lives, I think. Um, so I'll keep on reporting on it, keep on investigating. If you want the further background information, like I said, go to my website, Kangaroo Court of Australia, or look at the recent videos I've done over the last week, week, two weeks, on my website, Kangaroo Court of Australia. Uh, I'm in my YouTube channel as well. Other than that, uh, make sure you share this uh, video on Facebook and Twitter, etc. And uh, thank you for your time and have a good day.